Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And by request, today we're going to talk about how to straighten a wavy zipper on a mesh back gown. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. Have you ever had a bride put her gown on and it looked a little more like a dinosaur costume than a wedding gown? That is because the back of the gown is longer than her back. So what this alteration is actually doing is we're shortening the zipper length of the top part of the gown. So you're going to start with of course making sure that you first take up the shoulders and the bodice as much as possible to the size that it needs to be next you're going to measure her back from where the top of the gown should start at the neck all the way down to the solid part of the skirt so again you're measuring her back not the length of the present zipper that is too long. So as you can tell, we're getting about 15 and a quarter to 15 and a half inches on this measurement. Now we do actually need to kind of deepen the swoop at the uh, nape of the neck on this dress also. So I've mirrored the back here and I'm cutting that neck down just a little bit. And as you can tell, I've already removed the buttons and now I'm going to separate the zipper from the dress. Next, we are going to take our new zipper and this again is an invisible zipper and we're going to mark with pencil at the 15 and a quarter or 15 and a half mark. That's going to show us where that zipper needs to end up at the solid fabric. So you can see I'm looking at that mark and I'm going to make sure to pin that to where the solid fabric starts. Now, basically, we're going to need to ease in this illusion mesh, okay? So we are shortening the back, not by putting any seams in it or anything like that, but we're just going to ease it in. So that's kind of like um, it almost be like gathering or scrunching it in, but without making puckers or pleats or anything like that. You're going to do what I like to call schmooze it. You're going to just kind of schmooze it in. So um, I'm changing my needle here. I'm putting in a fresh nine ball point, And I'm using a narrow all-purpose zipper foot right now. It has a little bit of a foot on both sides of the needle and the way I'm stitching right now is more like an applique stitch you can see kind of how jumpy and free looking that presser foot is that's because I'm using my knee lift to remove the tension and this is more of a free motion stitch because what I'm trying to do is get kind of a basic based stitch down that's going to hold the ease in place for me so that when I come back in and really stitch close to the coil I don't have to worry about positioning the fabric and you can tell I kind of first eased it in a little bit with pins so that I knew you know that that the ease was being evenly dispersed throughout the zipper length so now I'm going to go back through and do my invisible zipper stitch. I've changed my foot. You can see now that is, um, it's just the half foot. I know a lot of you ask me about this, these feet. They're invisible zipper feet and there's a right foot and a left foot. So this one is allowing me to get all the way up against that coil. And you can see with my index finger of my left hand, I'm rolling that coil out so that I can get nice and close to it. You don't want to get that close to the coil when you go over a big hump of fabric, but when you're doing something nice and fine like this, you can get very, very close to it. 
Now, some of you sometimes check in on me about my hands. <laughs> Don't forget, a lot of times these videos, I like to edit them in high contrast. So I boost the saturation and the contrast, and it does look like I've been bathing in Kool-Aid sometimes, or that I have, you know, uh, something wrong, but everything is fine. It's just the editing that I'm using there. I'm actually, uh, my hands don't even look that old in real life. <laughs> High contrast is not kind. So now I am sewing from that pencil mark down to the bottom of the zipper and I'm starting at the bottom of the zipper, but you can see I'm pulling it taut. So I do sew this, and you can see that pencil mark again. I do sew these zippers in two parts. So I first do the illusion part, then I go back and go from the bottom of the zipper up to where I started the illusion part. If any of this just like goes way over your head, just hit pause, back up, and watch it again. And you can also adjust the speed in your settings, your viewing speed. So here I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I've eased it in generally with the pins and I'm just going to go through and just generally loosely baste this together with a little bit of an applique stitch. You can tell I did not bother to change my zipper foot for this. As you guys know, my BST besties, you know, I, I actually sew with an invisible zipper foot on my machine most commonly. It's my most, um, most frequently used foot. All right, so here we go again from the top and I'm gonna roll that coil all the way out to the left with my left hand, that index finger is rolling. And I'm pulling a little bit with my right hand just to give a little bit of tension. That just seems to give me a little bit more control sometimes, I feel like. And again, I'm not having to worry too much about puckering because I did that basting stitch. But you can see it's almost like a barely little bit of a gather along that zipper. And pressing is going to heal that. Well, now that we're working on the other side of the dress, I don't necessarily have to stop and flip this and go from the bottom up um, on the left side of the zipper. As you know, you can almost always do that in a straight shot. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get away from those coils just a little bit when I hit that thick part, not sewing quite as close to the coils as I did when I was only on the mesh. And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom there snip that and then I'm going to change my needle to a size 14 and I'm back to the uh, the right zipper foot you can see where my needle is now coming all the way over to the right side of that foot so that I can sew the bottom of the zipper down uh, into the center back seam and then I'm just going to anchor the tail of the zipper down to the seam allowance there all right, and here's how it looks after it has been sewn by machine, but not yet pressed. So you can see the little rumples. And I'm going to take my pressing ham. First, I'm going to soften it with steam. Then I'm gonna go through and press the zipper and the tool. And that's just gonna train it nicely. Now I'm not done. Do not click off yet. There is a very important step that is to come that will get this to contour to the bride's back. So it's more than just this pressing. There's the Taylor's clapper that really helps train it as well. So I'm just gonna go back and forth on this till I can get it nice and neat. Now with this bride, um, this mesh is not very strong. It's very, very thin. And um, she's also a thin bride. So her back is not filled out very evenly against the zipper at all. This zipper needs a little bit more support. So I'm putting some very lightweight sew through one quarter inch boning along one side of the zipper. Um, so you can see where I've done that. I've got that little square of ribbon. You can see that sitting right in front of me where I've heat sealed the edges where I can do a low profile cap for that boning. I do have a video on that, the low profile boning. 
but this is just going to help give the zipper a little bit more body but we don't want a strange amount of rigidity along the zipper and also keep in mind that just adding boning to a zipper that is too long is not going to fix it it's going to make it stand up really funny in the pack so the boning does not solve a wavy zipper in itself and there's still uh, one more very important step that I have coming up after this that is going to allow this boning to really work for you and not look funny so here I am wrapping the top of the boning so I'm capping it so that it can never kind of uh, the stays work their way loose and irritate her or uh, jab a hole in the in the gown I'm gonna sew that down and I still have um, my invisible zipper foot on there so I can get super close. And now I'm going to sew it down to where the top of the solid part of the skirt is. I'm just gonna let that be anchored down in there for a couple of inches. Now I'm sewing the buttons on I'm using some doubled up thread, nice thick thread, so that I only have to sew them once. And you're gonna see what I'm gonna do for the contour here. I'm sewing a line of buttons. Then right when I get to the part where her spine goes from curving in toward her belly to where it starts to kind of come back out to accommodate her rib cage and lung area, right when I got get there see what I'm doing I'm making that curve I'm approximating that curve and I'm pulling that thread it's a running stitch I'm pulling that thread taut and I'm gonna stop it right there with a knot with that curve in there so um, the tension of this stitch is gonna force that curve to curve in to her spine and I'm putting a good hard stop here with a few knots and then we're gonna proceed with the buttons at the top part of her back and you'll see then how I'm gonna curve that section so here's three knots curving like that as you see, I continued on with my buttons and I'm up toward the top now that needs to curve in toward her neck. You can see I'm approximating that curve again. So this time we're going to pull from, instead of pulling on the top outside of the zipper, you're going to sew the buttons on and you're going to pull from the inside and that's going to curve that neck in toward her neck so that this really follows the shape of her spine. If you were to only put the boning in here and not do the contouring with, the, with these thick stitches, it would look like she had a rod going up and down her back in the zipper and it would not look natural at all. So this is a very, very important step. Some of you ask sometimes about evenly spacing buttons. Um, I guess when you're starting out, some people uh, will mark it with some type of, you know, marker that will go away or is very faint. Um, some people mark them with pens. I literally just usually kind of eyeball it and then I just keep looking and if one looks way off, then I go back and fix it. Um, but over time, you'll get to where you can just kind of eyeball it and measure that distance with your eye. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm making the curve. I'm preparing my knot. And you can see it has to stay curved just like it was. Obviously, you need to add the hook and loop at the top and have her try it on. Um, but it turns out beautifully this way. I hope this has helped you. Please hit like, 
subscribe if you haven't already, and definitely share this on social media. That helps my channel so, so much. If you just share this on social media, hit that share button, and it's a tremendous blessing to me. Thank you guys so much, and take care. Oh, by the way, if you're new here, here comes my channel trailer to let you know a little bit more about what we do here. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.